welcome again day 16 of the fast we are five days left and we are excited not only for the end of the fast we are excited for what the Lord is doing with this fast amen how many of you are already been blessed how many you already have received from the Lord during this fast and how many already you say you know what hey this has been incredible journey how many of you have never fasted this long as you're fasting today drop number one in the chat and so if you've never fasted before this long drop number one in the chat I know a lot of people been messaging me people from our church who are like I've always wanted to never been encouraged enough never been motivated been waiting for the sign and uh, this is my first time this is the longest I've ever done so I just want to say from the beginning congratulations I just want to say from from the beginning great job um, I want to say from the beginning, especially I've met some mothers who, you know, have had children almost every single year, every other year. So they were never able to fast. Um, and now they were like, man, I'm so excited. I can finally, you know, do the fast. And they're so like energetic. And we had a leaders meeting yesterday and prayer. Um, it was awesome. So I just want to say, guys, it's been a joy to do this with you. Um, uh, the last 16 days, you know, of live streaming. Yes, it takes time. And I know a lot of you, it takes time from your work and maybe you're watching it while you're um, at your work, um, you know, but or re-watching it. I just want to say appreciate you. We love you. And um, five more days to go. Um, we got it. We, if we got to this far, we're going to be able to finish by God's grace. Amen. I'm going to share with you concerning rebuilding your life through fasting. Now, uh, when we mention things like open doors through fasting, you know, breaking through certain cycles of fasting, we please, please hear me loud and clear. We don't elevate fasting to something that fasting is not. Um, the power is not in fasting. And I mentioned that in my fast forward book, it's in God. Fasting is just one of the tools, one of the means coupled with prayer, with the Word of God, that helps us to get breakthrough through certain limitations and strongholds. As in this fast, the verse that I've used is that this kind does not leave except by prayer and fasting. You know, I just want to encourage you that there are just some things that don't seem to be broken through until people fast. In Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 3, uh, I want us to go into that verse right now. Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 3 and we're gonna see what happened to him where is my Nehemiah lower 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 right here chapter 1 and verse 3 um, Nehemiah hears this report he sees that the walls are broken down the gates are burnt with fire he sees also that there's a great distress of people of His. And the scripture says, So it was when I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And then we go a little bit further. He begins to pray to God. We actually read His prayer. So people who a lot of times say things like, Oh, fasting, you should never be um you know should never be nobody should know about your fasting well interesting like we actually know that nehemiah fasted the bible says you know close the door behind you and don't let nobody you know don't, don't make your prayers public in a sense don't, don't let blow the the trumpet but we see nehemiah actually the prayer is actually recorded here what he actually prayed so it deals with the motive it deals with the motive of our heart. But I want you to see his motive is that he begins to say, I pray to the Lord of heaven. He begins to repent for the sins, confess the sins of Israel. And then he begins to really just cry out to the Lord on behalf of Israel. And then something begins to happen as all of this is taking place. He's standing in front of his boss, the king, and he's sad. Now he knows better not to be sad in front of his boss because the job that he does, he needs to kind of, you know, have a happy face. And then the king's asking, why is your face sad? You're not sick, aren't you? He says, no, this is nothing but the sorrow of the heart. No, so the king is seeing in him that 
you're not sick. He says, I see something is happening with your heart. And he says, I became dreadfully afraid. And then as the king is asking him, so what is your request? What do you want? Nehemiah, I mean, you're praying and fasting. What do you want? And Nehemiah prays to God at that moment. And then he begins to ask him for favor. And he says, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor, somebody drop in the chat, favor in your side, I ask that you send me to Judah, the city of my father's tombs, that I may rebuild it. That I may rebuild it. We know the rest of the book. Nehemiah rebuilds the walls. And for many people, you know, leadership books have been written about rebuilding walls. Rebuilding walls in your family, rebuilding walls in your ministry, rebuilding things that have been destroyed by the enemy. And I believe there are many people in this chat and many people that are watching this right now that you are in that stage where maybe during COVID you lost a lot of things. Maybe during COVID you experience huge losses and the enemy has taken certain things in your life. Maybe because of your sins in the past, the enemy has lost your family, has lost, destroyed your, your, your city, destroyed your family, destroyed your finances, destroyed your purity. And now you're dealing with a lot of repercussions and though you're forgiven, you're saved, but the rebuilding component of your life takes a lot of time. Some of us are building our life with Christ, but some of us are rebuilding our life in Christ. Rebuilding means we have been with the Lord through whatever reasons. We walked away from Jesus. We made a mess. The enemy has done his job. Maybe life has done his job. Our sins caught up with us. And now we're dealing with the repercussions of that. And where some people will start from zero, we actually have to start from minus or negative. It's kind of like, you know, same thing financially. There are people that are starting their finances from zero in the sense they're starting from scratch. And there are people who accumulated so much debt, they can't start from zero. They have to actually catch up to zero first. They have to rebuild their credit. They have to rebuild their finances. So many people is like that with health. You know, for so many of us, we just have to maintain our health. Eat right, exercise fast, um, and, you know, rest, uh, stay away, you know, keep stress away. But there are some of you watching right now and listening, you, you can't just start maintaining. Before you get to the maintaining, you have to get to the point where you got to rebuild your health. Because, you know, maybe you have an excessive weight. Maybe you are overweight or you're maybe or you're obese. Or maybe you picked up so much weight and you picked up so many bad habits that to break, uh, you have to first break things down before you build things up. Amen. We have to break things down before we build things up. And that is the case with actually a lot of people. Um, for many people, they don't start building things up. They actually have to start rebuilding things up because things have been broken down by sin. And now they have to come in and actually begin to rebuild those things. Now, when I say break things down, I mean break strongholds, break bad habits, uh, break things that are not of the Lord. And Nehemiah, before he rebuilds the walls, I want you to see the foundation of someone who starts to rebuild their life. That's why I always challenge people. If you're dealing with obesity, you're dealing with overweightness, you're dealing with smoking, some kind of an addiction, the foundation of you rebuilding your freedom, rebuilding your life has to be seeking God. It, it can't be just like, well, I'm going to go to an AA meeting. Oh, I'm just going to go into another, I'm just going to take a new diet. I'm just going to start practicing a you know, keto diet. Uh, you know, I'm just going to take a financial peace class. That's very important. Those things, please hear me loud and clear, are very important. Not only I encourage that, it's the sound wisdom. It is, it is common sense, very important. The problem with those things though, if the foundation of your life, if behind the scenes you're dealing with spiritual problems, you will not be able to rebuild because your foundation is not built on rock. It's not built on Christ. It's not built on listening and obeying what Jesus says. And one of those foundational things that help to, I would say, clear things in the spiritual realm is what Nehemiah did. 
is you press into God in prayer and you press into God in fasting. Nehemiah had a very noble position in political courts, in the court of his boss, he was actually a king. He was very well connected, very prestigious job, probably paid really well. Yet Nehemiah hears something. He gets a call and he responds to a nudge in his heart. It's not the need that made him fast. It's a nudge. And that's why a lot of you join the fast. It's not because you just need a breakthrough. Because we always need a breakthrough. But there was a nudge. As I threw the challenge, something in you responded. And that's what happened to ne Nehemiah. He hears the news about what's happening there and something happens in his heart. There's, a, there's this prompting. There's this thing. I, I, I got to fast. I got to pray. This, this, this breaks my heart. And I believe that many of you responded to this fast because of a spiritual prompting and a spiritual nudge. And please understand, God used Nehemiah not only to fast, He used them to actually be the answer to His own fast. Come on, this is good. God used Nehemiah not only to weep and repent, God actually used Nehemiah to be the rebuilder of the walls. I believe if you lay a foundation of prayer, fasting, God's Word, this not only lays a foundation for your future success in God, but God will use you now to help rebuild and build on that foundation. To build this year on that foundation, build with your health, build in your finances, build in your marriage, in the way that pleases God. Nehemiah was not only the one used to pray and fast, he actually became called to rebuild the wall. And remember, his job was to be a cupbearer, not a wall builder. But something happens when you fast and pray. Like I mentioned, and you dropped it in the chat, God begins to give you favor. And when God gives favor, doors get open where before they have not been open. And I believe that for us who are fasting and praying, that God will release favor. Drop this in the chat. Fasting releases favor. And what that does, favor, I don't mean that you get good luck and good break. Favor is needed to open doors. Because favor opens doors. As Nehemiah received favor from his boss, the king, it opened the door. There are some of you, the people you're working for, the people you're connected, the people you're about to meet this year can open doors for you. But you will need to find favor with them. And as you pray and as you fast, instead of breaking through the door, we've mentioned a few, a few days ago how we need to keep knocking. But today what I'm, what I'm encouraging is that somebody will open the door for you. And they will have favor on you. Not just God, because God uses people. God can use your boss. God can use your parent. God can use your pastor. God can use somebody that you don't even know who actually is favorable toward you for a reason you can't know, you don't know except God is using that. And why is God using that? Because He wants to open the door for you to move from a cup bearer to a wall builder, to begin to rebuild the walls in your life and the walls in your family's life, the walls maybe in your community's life. I've experienced that in my own life where God would use people, you know, who would come into my life and open doors. And it started first as an invitation to speak. I would go and speak at the conference and then that would open doors to literally like so many places. Or I would connect with the, with the person that 
I thought it would be just my friend. And then God will use that person to open doors. God will use that person because I would find favor with that person. Didn't even look for that. And so I've experienced this in my own life and I just want to encourage you that God wants to do that for you this year. But I'm not saying that this is a formula, but I'm learning from Nehemiah. And I do see these tr principles that are transferable. These principles, they transfer to us today. And these principles is when you feel the nudge of the Lord, the prompting of God, and you're fasting and you're praying. And the job that you currently have, there are people in this live stream right now, by the end of this year, you're not going to be a cupbearer. It might be a prestigious job. It might pay well. But God will burden your heart with a calling. And He will give you favor. And not only He will give you favor, He will open a door where other people maybe want to do, be. And you will walk into that place. Some of you will start a ministry. You will start a church. You will start a small group. You will write a book. You will start a nonprofit. You will begin to sponsor and support orphanages. You will begin to do those things that right now in this season of your life, you're like, not really, not, no, that's the last thing on my mind. But God will give you a burden. God will give you then favor. And then God will send the right people who will open the door. And then you'll just walk in. But fasting and prayer positions you for that favor. Please understand, favor has nothing really to do with you being lucky. Favor is not really about you being super blessed and you being super great. Favor has a purpose. Favor has an assignment. And its assignment is to open doors that are closed. Why do you need those open doors? So you can enter into a season where you can bring impact for God's kingdom that otherwise you wouldn't be able to. Some will have a book publisher. A publishing company will open a door for you to release a book. Why? Because the message God placed in you needs to touch the world. For some of you, you will have a, you will have a song that you will write and somebody will come alongside and open a door so you can record that song. Why? So that that song can minister healing and breakthrough to the world. There's others of you. Somebody will give you some tips and advice on how to start a YouTube and you're going to maybe start streaming or start writing blogs. Or maybe you start creating a classes and start teaching young women or start teaching young men or you will join a youth ministry or you will become a youth pastor or you will start teaching children. The idea is this, God gives favor so that God can open doors with that favor. And so when you enter into that new season, that you are faithful with the assignment that God has placed in you. And prayer and fasting helps us to build that foundation of brokenness before God, receiving the calling, receiving the burden, and receiving God's vision for our life. Don't get settled in the job that you're working. Don't get comfortable in the place that you are in. Don't think it's permanent because I can tell you one thing, people who fast and pray, they seem to see drastic, dramatic changes in their careers. And I have testimonies from our own church of people who, you know, worked from nine to five. There's, and, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with working from nine to five. There's nothing ungodly. There's nothing poor or bad working a job where you clock in and clock out. But I remember a, a girl that was coming to uh, mine and my wife's small group. And she got saved actually when I was still in high school. I preached in her, I preached in the classroom and my sister invited her. And then uh, she invited her that night, she got saved. And then, um, you know, she kind of fell away from the Lord she came back to the Lord and she was working for, you know, had a good job. And when she was, she went a 21 day water fast. And we were not doing a 21 day water fast as a church. She just felt a nudge from the Lord. And she still worked full time, but she was doing a different job. And then she always wanted to work in the medical field. And the fast was over and 
something happened. A clinic from another city opens a clinic in our city, like a, an extension. And they made her the main overseer of that clinic. So not only she, she doesn't have an education being a doctor, but she actually started to have, from my understanding, I think five or six doctors. And I don't remember all the details right now because it's been, it's been a few years. And so she went from wanting to work in the clinic to running a clinic. And she wrote this, you know, whole letter to us. Um, and she said that she's like, God took me from, you know, from wanting to be in this clinic to actually entrusting me to run a whole clinic. So they have nurses, they have doctors, they have, they do surgeries there. And so, and she's the main overseer because again, how did that happen? That clinic from Seattle, that was Seattle, when they came here, somebody recommended her. She met with them. When they heard her heart, when they heard how passionate she is, they said, why don't you come to Seattle? We'll, we'll kind of train you. And so they trained her. They saw that they started very little with her, short, uh, you know, just a few employees first. They saw how she ran and then they started to expand. And she found favor with them. And not only her income went through the roof, but that she didn't do that for the income. She did that because that was her passion. God placed that passion. I want to help people in this area. And on the top of that, in that clinic, they offer, I think like once a, once a week or once a month, um, like a free care for people who can't afford it. And that's one of her very strong passions is to help people who cannot afford medical care. And so, and to me, it's always like reminded me of that, that God is able to sometimes during our fasting and prayer, reposition our careers, reposition our jobs. And I'm pretty sure none of us are fasting for that, which I don't think we should, but I want you to be ready because that can happen this year where the Lord will reposition you for strategic effectiveness, where the Lord will open doors that before have never been opened, doors that you're not qualified for, to enter places you're not actually ready for. And you will be like, I am overwhelmed. I mean, it's one thing to give a cup of water to the king, a cup of wine. It's another thing to build this, to rebuild a city to rebuild its walls. I'm not sure I have the construction experience for that. But see, when you fast and pray and God sees that your heart is ready for a burden, because that's what it's about. Your heart is ready to receive His call. Your heart is ready to receive what He wants. Then guess what begins to happen? The Lord says, well now you caught the burden. I need to get you into a different room. I need to get you into a different season where you can now release something I placed inside of you, but you cannot get into a different room unless I give you favor. So favor will help you to unlock doors so you can enter into a room, a season, a level for the most effectiveness for your God. You might serve under a wonderful boss and have a wonderful job. But there are people watching me right now. Mark my words. Where in not long time from now, you will be the boss. Not because you hate your job, but because God will place things inside of you that will be so much greater. And instead of just you being provided by a boss, you will become a person that now will provide for other people and other families. And it will happen naturally. You're not going to try to strive. God will give you favor and that favor will unlock doors. And when that favor unlocks doors, you will know season has shifted. You went from a cup bearer to a wall builder and a wall rebuilder. Amen. And I really believe that this is not just an encouragement. I sense in my heart, this is a prophetic word for somebody. And you might not understand this right now, but even as you're taking notes, is put it and ponder it on your heart and just watch the Lord bring breakthrough in the area of your career and in the area of your job. I believe that our jobs are sacred unless we're doing something illegal, immoral. But whatever we do for God, you don't have to work at the church. You don't have to work for a nonprofit to do what matters to God. 
Nehemiah, he was a cupbearer. But if we wouldn't be if it wouldn't be for that job, it would have never connected him with the king who could give him the money, who could give him the letters of recommendation, and who could give him favor to rebuild the wall. But even building the wall, it wasn't necessarily being a priest. Building a wall is not necessarily being a prophet. Building a wall is not necessarily being an apostle or planting a church. Still, a whole book of Nehemiah is written about a guy who is rebuilding a wall. And God will use you this year. God will take you this year to a different season. Now some of you, it might not happen, but in your own job and in your own career, you will see God promoting you. You will see God opening new opportunities for you and taking you in your own job to places that maybe you never thought belonged to you. And always remember that God's favor is not just a reward, but it's a responsibility. Drop this in the chat. God's favor is not just a reward, it's a responsibility. Where the prosperity preachers and where people who use godliness as a means to an end, as a means of gain, where they miss it is where they miss that, that the favor is not just a reward for fasting, it has a responsibility. Esther had favor. It wasn't because she was good looking. Of course she was good looking, but Marduk came and says this favor carries responsibility. This favor carries a burden. You have to be faithful with favor, meaning you have to put it to the use for which you were given this favor. And in Esther case, Esther's case, she actually had to sacrifice the favor temporarily. That's what she thought she was doing to win the nation. When God starts prospering you, when God starts promoting you, it's both a reward and a responsibility. As a reward, you thank God for His favor. But please, don't let it get into your head thinking you're better than other people. Thinking, oh because I fasted, oh because I prayed, oh yeah I, I lived holy, finally I am reaping the results, the harvest of my good seeds. That's only 50%. The other 50% is a responsibility. For Esther, it was to save a nation. Why do you think Moses was chosen? Because Moses knew the desert. Moses knew the Egyptian wisdom. Moses knew how to navigate slaves and turn them into a nation. An average Joe wouldn't be able to pull that off. Moses was built for 40 years in Egypt and then for 40 years in the wilderness. 80 years of this. Now God says, I'm going to use you to build a nation. I'm going to use you to bring commandments. I'm going to use you to structure this. Your favor has responsibility. Your favor carries weight of responsibility. When God blesses you with finances, you have responsibility. Not only to say, well, look, I am such a great investor. You know, I grew up in a good family. They taught me about investing. You know, I've, ha I've had an inheritance. Look, I am so lucky. And the rest of you weirdos are not lucky. That is an arrogant, prideful way to look at your life. Your prosperity has a purpose and your favor has responsibility. It's going to open doors for you so you can fulfill your assignment. The moment it goes into your head and you do what the rich man did, when his fields yielded crops and he built bigger barns, nothing wrong at first, but he missed the purpose of his prosperity. He missed the purpose of his favor. And Jesus responding to the, in this story, he's saying, tonight your soul will be taken from you. He says, what's going to happen with all this stuff that you built? Meaning, you, you, you saw favor as a, result as a reward but you missed it that it's a responsibility it's to help the unfortunate it's to help the poor it's to help the needy it's to lift those that are downstrodden you know last year when i stopped traveling for about a year a year maybe 11 months and the lord put on my heart and he said vlad i want you to be a ladder for your team for your disciples, but for your team, people who are in your team at church. 
for many pastors and a lot of them I know you know they're usually the ones constantly kind of go into every invitation they get and they usually don't promote their team they kind of keep their team to be their little mini servants and the Lord challenged me and he says that's not how I want you to do it so I started to preach twice a month our team was preaching more and then every invitation that I got to preach at different churches I declined and I asked that church to have one of my team members uh, one of our pastors one of my demon slayers to go and preach and half of the church is kind of like no we'll just wait for you when you come out of that you know 12 month cycle um, and but some of them brought my team and they were very greatly blessed even this year though I'm taking less invitations maybe 10% or something of all the invitations that I take and the rest of them I say hey could you could you have Pastor Ilya come and preach like this week you know had a pastor from Germany that reached out and I said hey I want you to have Pastor Ilya um, you know leaders from Romania whom I love dearly and want to go you know there again but I really feel that it's not time for me and I was like hey could you have Ilya go and speak one of the reasons is because the favor God has given me not only is a reward but it's a responsibility not only to impact the world but to raise other people at least to the level that God has given me they have me to open the door for them and I need to be used by God I know that I cannot do what God will do for them but I can do like what that king did for Nehemiah and I want to speak to those of you right now who are here watching and you are the person who can open doors for others you are the person who can have favor on others with one text message you can change somebody's destiny for good with one you know bank wire you can pay off somebody's car with one check you can pay for a family's rent be the one not only who always expects favor may God promote you this year that you give favor and maybe something like oh but God doesn't have favorites really you haven't read the Bible God has favorites okay um, look at David you know not not God doesn't practice favoritism but God has favorites God has people who who love him and he seeks those that such that worship him God loves us you know all the same <laughs> but he relates to us differently so this idea that I just want to give every person an opportunity you won't be able to I always say this and it's a quote from Andy Stanley I want to do for one what I wish to do for everyone but maybe you're in a place where you're looking for favor but some of you are in a place right now while you're looking for favor and you're looking for open doors you already have enough of favor to give someone else who wishes and wants to come up or come to the level that you are on what if you would do both of those things say Lord open the doors for me this year and Lord help me to open the doors for somebody else drop this in the chat Lord open the doors for me this year and Lord help me to open the doors for somebody else in Jesus name amen and that's why you know and I can go on and on and on about um, this part and you know I have few friends very dear friends of mine who you know have a lot of open doors and you know and one of them is uh, my friend David Diga you know and he's been trying to get me to Sid Roth's you know interview for some time and uh, and I believe that the Lord's gonna you know one day grant that because of David Diga's persistence and uh, you know and seeing that where you know he doesn't owe me anything I mean he's just my friend and but God has given me favor with him you know where you know even certain so many things from this ministry that I've learned from him that he just opened doors for me he said hey this is who you contact hey this is Vlad don't miss out on this this is something you just came out you, uh, you need to be aware of this or he would have some kind of a meeting with the person that um, I would love to meet and he would just phone me he's like get on a plane I want you to come because um, I want you to meet this person um, and stuff so and you know it, it's a great blessing to have a friends like that and so I, I do believe in this principle that Nehemiah had is that he he felt a burden from God he um, he fasted and prayed and then God gave him favor but he used that favor not to get a bigger house not to get a nicer car he used that favor to rebuild the wall now I am not against um, having things 
I think the Bible is against things having us. Uh, the Bible is not against us having prosperity. The Bible is against us missing the purpose for our prosperity and missing our purpose for why we live on this earth. If the reason why you live on this earth is to get rich and to get wealthy, as a Christian, you need to repent because your reason is to glorify Jesus and to fulfill the call He has for you. Wealth, blessings, cars, houses, all of these things, education, all of that has its place. But it's not first and it's not our purpose. It's not the point why we breathe and live. Why we live and why we breathe is why Jesus died to save and to seek that which is lost. Jesus says, for this purpose, I came. And this wasn't this wasn't what we would call it. It was to preach the gospel. So that's why we live. And God gives us prosperity as a tool. God gives us power as a tool. God gives us favor as a tool, as a key to unlock certain doors. Otherwise, we would never be able to enter. And why do we enter those doors? Not so we can become popular, famous and be celebrities. It's so that we could fulfill, in Nehemiah's case, build a wall. In Esther's case, save a nation. In your case, it will be different but it will help somebody else. It will elevate somebody else. And somebody will get on their knees and say, Lord, thank you for this person. Thank you for this person. You answered my prayer. When we gave our first car with me and my wife, you know, I've never had somebody give me a car. Till this day, never had one person give me a car. But me and my wife till this day have given over seven cars. It doesn't matter that nobody gave me. When we had extra and we felt the tug in our heart, we gave. And you know what the Lord reminded me of? He said, Vlad, you went from receiving a miracle to being someone's miracle. He said, do you realize this person prayed for a car? You giving them, they're thanking God that they received the miracle. He says, you were a part of a miracle in someone's life. And that's just incredible. If you, you know, for us to be able to do that, you know, we could have easily just said, you know, no, we're just going to sell it. And nothing wrong. I'm not against selling cars and buying new ones and stuff. So I have a nice car right now. It's, I don't have a problem with that. My, my, my challenge is when we only believe for a miracle and we never become a miracle to somebody else. When we only believe for favor and we never look behind us, there are so many people that are waiting, crying out. And all you have to do is just stretch your heart just a little bit and say, it's not just about me. For some of you, all you got to do is just honestly open your home and start a small group. Because there are people looking for community, looking for somebody to honestly love them, care for them, break God's word with them and just challenge them to grow in Christ. To them, this means so much. They don't need a car, they don't need a, their bills paid for. They need somebody to, to just honestly walk with them. They're sheep without a shepherd, they're scattered and they need you. There are other people that maybe you have an extra car and you know somebody who's literally struggling, taking a bus to church, taking a bus to work. And all you can do is just fix that car and you can give them away. Guess what happens? You just unlock a door for somebody else. I'm not saying that automatically all doors will be unlocked for you but what I'm saying is that you're more like Jesus when you do that because not all of us are going to be receiving favor this year. Some of you are going to be giving favor this year in Jesus name. I want to move from receiving a miracle to being a miracle. If you do also drop number one in the chat. Amen. This will be the year of God's favor open doors and greater effectiveness for God's kingdom. This will be the year where we will give favor. We will open doors as well so that other people can flourish in their purpose for God. Amen. If you receive this message, drop that, drop that fire emoji in the chat right now. We're going to get ready to pray. We're going to get ready to minister right now. Usually around this time, I put out the testimony. Um, I want to invite you that if during this fast, you already have received a miracle, 
if during this fast you already have experienced the power of God um, in deliverance or in healing, if during this fast you've experienced already some kind of a thing that you've been believing for, maybe even a financial miracle, um, I have a link where you can go and submit your testimony of the fasting. This will be much appreciated. I'm looking forward. I've been reading these testimonies. There's testimonies that came in yesterday of healing, testimonies yesterday that came in of breakthrough, and I am excited for what the Lord is going to do today. Today, what I would like to do is I would like to pray for this area of our life that the Lord will begin to bring breakthrough in the area of our jobs, in the area of our finances, and in the area of our career. If you're struggling in this area, if you need God's supernatural intervention, if where you are at right now, you simply understand that only God can get you through, I want to pray with you today. Today is a different prayer. I'm not going to be praying for healing specifically and for deliverance, but I want to be praying for breakthrough. I want to be praying for breakthrough. Please hear me loud and clear. You already heard, but I'm just going to repeat that. Prosperity has a purpose and favor has responsibility. And so if you are able to fulfill those responsibilities, if you are able to be faithful as God blesses you, not become self-centered, not become focused only on yourself, then I want to agree with you. Now, if you are not able to, I pray that God will give you the strength to be able in Jesus' mighty name so that you this year will experience the breakthrough and that you will grow in generosity, you will grow in giving, you will also grow in helping others more than you have helped people before in Jesus name. Let's pray. So drop the prayer emoji if you are agreeing with me in this prayer. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come right now and I agree with every single person watching and re-watching this broadcast. There are many people, Lord, who have stagnation and Lord, some people who are watching right now, they actually have a demon of stagnation, a spirit of limitation. It's a destiny stealing spirit who wants to derail, who wants to detour and who wants to defeat their purpose. So they're not effective. They're not successful. So they're not fruitful so that they are not, their progress is not evident, like Paul said to Timothy, so that their way is not prosperous, like uh, like uh, you said, uh, yeah, like Moses said to Joshua, so that they're not uh, fruitful in everything, that successful in everything they do, like Psalm 1 says, Lord, so that they're not prosperous in their way, Lord. And right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, any generational curse of financial collapse, financial poverty, financial struggle, struggled accidents, constant tickets, medical bills, or things that are just demonically created in their life. In Jesus mighty name, I rebuke those curses right now. I agree with your people right now, those watching us. I agree with your people right now. We renounce those curses. Come on, just renounce this. Just simply say, I renounce generational curses of poverty. I renounce generational curses of limitation. I renounce those of you who know you have that. Please understand, some poverty is chosen. Jesus became poor. Blessed are the poor in spirit. But I'm talking about right now specific poverty where you don't have enough, you constantly struggle by your hard working and it's like a spiritual thing, something always steals, this devourer is stealing your, your prosperity, is stealing your career, stealing your promotion and so we're just going to renounce it, just renounce that right now. Lord, we renounce those things right now in the name of Jesus. Anything that the, my ancestors did that have opened the door, any way that they have lied or duped people, any way that they have be cheated people, any way that they have caused pain in other people's lives financially anywhere where they have spilled financial blood in the name of Jesus Christ I renounce those curses off of my family I renounce those curses off of my life in Jesus mighty name and right now I command every unclean spirit I command every devourer I command every thief I command right now every curse and an unclean demonic spirit that is destroying and stealing my promotion stealing my prosperity, stealing my breakthrough, stealing my progress, I come against that evil spirit and I break its grip. I command it to leave my life right now in Jesus mighty name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I ask you for your breakthrough this year. 
Holy Spirit, we ask you right now for your breakthrough in our finances. We ask you for your breakthrough in our career. We ask you that you will begin to give us favor in the places where we work. That you will begin to open doors into seasons and into levels and into rooms that you want us to be for the purpose that you want us to accomplish, Lord. We are not seeking promotion for the promotion's sake. We are not seeking elevation for the elevation's sake. Lord, we are not doing that because we deserve it, Lord, but because you have given us a purpose. And I ask you right now in the name of Jesus, may the doors that have been closed be open this year. May this year, God, may their employer, may somebody from their past, may in their family, may the uncle or the auntie or people that you have strategically placed in their life, may favor be extended in their life in Jesus' name. May this favor open doors. May this favor, Lord God, put them into a new season in their life, in their finances and in their career. May this favor open doors, God, so that things you placed inside of them will be released to the world. That the desires you placed in their hearts will become fulfilled, Lord. Whether those desires are to help some people, whether those desires are to build something, whether those desires are to build orphanages, support the homeless and care for the needy. Lord, whether those desires is to, you know, pay for the church building con uh, uh, construction, whether those desires, Lord God, is to buy somebody a home, buy somebody a car. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you right now, open doors that have been closed. I ask you for favor as Nehemiah experienced favor and that king gave him recommendation. That king gave him finances. That king gave him all that Nehemiah needed to build the wall, to rebuild the wall. May you extend it for us today, Lord. May you give us the necessary finances. May you give us the necessary favor. May you give us the necessary grace. May you give us the necessary open doors that we need to most effectively serve our generation in Jesus mighty name. Lord we stand in agreement right now. Holy Spirit we ask you right now that your mighty grace will begin to move this year in our life like never before in Jesus mighty name. May stagnation be defeated. May a lack of promotion be defeated Lord God. May those who have been in a dry season financially may that be broken over their life in the name of Jesus. May there be an increase in their life Lord. Lord you can trust us with breakthrough because we're going to help other people. You can trust us with breakthrough because we're going to tithe, because we are going to sacrifice, we're going to do works of charity. Lord, you can trust us with breakthrough because we will always give you the glory. Lord, you can trust us with breakthrough because we will not forsake prayer, your word, go into a local church or fasting or memorizing verses. Lord, we will not forsake you even when you bless us, God. And therefore, you can trust us with breakthrough, God. Today, we open our hands and in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those watching right now Lord who already have favor but they want more. They have favor that they can already bless somebody and Lord we make a decision right now that we will give not only out of overflow we will also give out of just enough. We will help other people. Lord we will open our homes for small group. Lord we will if we have extra cars we're going to give them. Lord, if you have given us an extra home, we are going to give that, Lord. We're going to try to live like the first church lived, Lord, where they sold things and they gave them away. You know, Lord, we know, Lord, that you want us to provide for a family. You, you want us to lay uh, things, inheritance, even for our grandchildren, Lord. We know that you're not against us having retirement. You're not against us having things, Lord. But you want us to grow and be stretched in our generosity. Maybe this year be the year where we experience what it's like to be an answer to somebody's prayer to be a miracle in somebody else's life. May this be the year, Lord, where we experience what it's like to open a door for somebody else, to give a recommendation, to go outside of our way to help somebody, pay for somebody's school, to pay for somebody's trip or maybe a vacation, to pay for somebody's rent, to pay for somebody's uh, meal or, or something as small, Lord God, as paying for somebody's clothes, Lord God. May you use us this year, God. May you stretch our boundaries, God. May we not only receive favor, may we give favor. May we not only receive a miracle, may we 
be a miracle for somebody else this year Lord. May you use us, use us like Esther. May you use us like that king who extended favor to Nehemiah in Jesus mighty name. Father I also pray for people that are watching this stream right now and, and you have maybe put on their heart to, to be partners with this ministry or maybe partner with Hungry Gen to help us build that facility Lord. For those that are watching maybe and they are people of great means and you have blessed them beyond measure and the blessing is definitely because because of their hard work, because of their good habits, but also Lord because of your purpose. You have a purpose for them to expand your kingdom. May you move upon our hearts, not just their hearts but my heart God, all of our hearts to do what you have called us to do in this hour and this day. So that when we die Lord God, we, we don't feel like we're leaving home but we're going home because our treasure is in heaven Lord. I know that you're going to prosper us. I know that you're going to promote us. I know that you're going to bless us, God. But in whatever season we are in, we make a decision in this prayer right now to be faithful, Lord God, to be responsible and to be people, God, who use what you've given us to help those you've placed in our path for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we renounce greed. We renounce mammon. We renounce stinginess. We renounce you know, being tight with our finances, controlling it too much instead of being generous and instead of being a liberal soul, a soul that is giving with liberty and that is extending favor to other people. In Jesus' mighty name. Bless your people right now, Lord. Prosper them, Lord. Promote them this year, Lord. Lord, these people are broken. Lord, these people are fasting and praying. Lord, these people are pressing into you. May what you did to Nehemiah happen to us. May you give us a burden. May you give us a vision. May you give us a call. But may you open the doors that need to be opened. And may you give us favor that we need in this hour. And may you give us grace to give favor to others, to give to others, serve others, and love others. In Jesus' name, Amen. Somebody say, I receive. I receive in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Feel the presence of Jesus right now. Feel a lot of people will get re recalibrated today with your view of prosperity, promotion, job, favor, and and I believe the Lord is going to start directing a lot of your hearts toward those that you need to help who are within your vicinity, who are within your proximity, who are close to you, who are not very far from you. Sometimes those crying needs in Jesus' name. Just ask that you don't ever close your heart to people. I remember one time we were raising, you know, uh, we were trying to collect some money to help this person buy a car. And I reached out to a very successful businessman and I said, hey, all of us are pitching in like 500 bucks to buy a car. And he said, I am not going to contribute. He says, I pulled myself by my own bootstraps. And he says, nobody helped me. He says, if I help them, they don't learn the lesson. I said, what? I said, what do you mean? They won't learn the lesson. I said, where in the Bible does it say, don't help the poor so they can learn the lesson? He's like, yeah, I just don't believe. I don't think what that's what that means. I was like, what does that mean then? He's like, I don't know, but I'm not gonna give. You know, and greed, uh, this, this stinginess, it hides behind those statements. You know, like they won't learn the lesson. Yeah, people need to learn a lesson. People need to be educated financially, 100%. But Jesus still said, poor you will have with you always. So it, God tests us with that. And honestly, it was so sad to see a guy who literally is very loaded. I mean, 500 bucks for him, like, you know, five cents for me. And and the rest of us who were <laughs> who poor. <laughs> and we still found money. And, and to me, I realized that day that I'm not saying every rich person is like that. 100% not like that but it is something just got provoked in me and I said God I'll never 
ever want to believe in this garbage and um and stuff so i want to be a person that yes even something my wife challenged me because before i kind of had a little little thing toward helping uh, people homeless people on the street you know i was like oh they're gonna spend it on alcohol you know and um and my wife is the one that really challenged me with that and she says that is not your responsibility and job to decide he says you can't use those excuses where they're gonna spend money he says okay then go and buy them food oh no but i don't have time to buy the food then don't ignore them he's like they're right right here you know and it takes a lot of courage and boldness to already stand there and so and ever since then i mean my wife been practicing something of trying to ca have cash in our car all the time um and to honestly so the books that i sell at the church um we, we sold you know last week and i keep cash in my car mainly to give to the to, to give to the people that we meet the homeless people and so um and i really just kind of want to encourage you guys let, let, let's not build these weird dumb excuses okay for why we are stingy stingy just, just say it as it is just say hey i am stingy spirit of mammon has gotten control of my heart i need to be delivered and stuff so but if you don't want to help anybody and you hide under this pretense like judas you know this could have been given to the poor but in reality he was not caring for the poor uh, let's develop a soft heart toward the needy toward the hurting now there's many of you you're not able to do that that's completely fine please do, there's no shame or guilt in that uh, but be thinking about that and make the decision when the lord will prosper me i will be more generous like jacob and jacob only had a staff he slept on the rock and then he wakes up and he sees the vision of god you know and he doesn't have anything to give to god and he's like god but when you bless me I can promise you, I'm going to be generous. And when God blessed him, he was generous. And so just be generous with the poor. Be generous with the needy. Be generous with the single moms, the ones that you see are struggling, the widows, you know, in your church, the widows in, you know, the ones that you know, your parents especially. For those of you whose parents are maybe old and, and fragile and they cannot work and they're struggling financially, be generous with them. And you have extra, if you have extra, you know, don't be that person who said, no, I'm not going to help my parents. Why? You know, they, they, as a child, they just ignored me really come on you're a christian don't think like that oh but what about my needs my parents should be providing with me you know they should be giving me an inheritance instead they're just you know a, a burden to me right now financially never think like that because one day you will be old and god have mercy on you if you say stuff like that and think like that one thing that i want to mention and I, when i was praying i felt this from the lord that there are people in the chat who are, who were thieves. You stole money from other people. And now you have serious financial problems. Not necessarily in your career, but you have things that constantly draining your finances. And as I was praying, I really felt to remind some of you that you need to repent of the sin of stealing and you need to make amends, yes not so God can forgive you so that the curse will be broken over your life the people you ripped off you need to reach out to them and you need to apologize and you need to ask what amends you need to make now some of them will forgive you and give you a clean slate some of you will some of them will not forgive you and they will ask you to pay back for what you stole and you will have to do that the idea that you can steal money from other people a car maybe you can steal things maybe you sold a product you knew it was broken but you lied so you can charge more for it that is not only a sin it's a direct open door for financial unexplainable problems you need to reach out to those people if you can if you can find their contact and apologize Maybe you stole from stores, Walmart or others. You need to go back. Even if it's a new system, new management there, you need to repent. You need to publicly, you need to do something that hurts and embarrasses you. Why? Because that kind of stuff does not go unpunished. Mark my words, every thief, there's scriptures and I have it in my break free book where timber will fall from the house of a thief. Jesus was crucified between two thieves. Judas got a demon and committed suicide. Stealing is a very, very dangerous, very, very dangerous. Not only you're like Satan when you steal because he's a thief, 
you open your life completely wide open to demonic intrusion, especially in the area of your finances. I have testimony from my team, many of my team members who, before they came to Christ, they practiced that, stealing, a little bit there, a little bit there. And during a fast, God would convict them. And they would actually message those people that they ripped off or they stole, repented. Some of them actually went to the stores where they stole things and wrote a check. And the management of the store were like, what, what are you doing? And this happened like 17 years ago. And so, but curses don't age. And so really just want to challenge you with that. You, you can't do this kind of shady, weird stuff and expect to, to get away with it. You may say, but I'm a Christian. All of that stuff doesn't matter. <laughs> really? Your sins are forgiven. Yeah. But you can be cursed. You need to deal with those things. So just examine your heart. I'm not saying go start digging in the backyard of your life and every sin that you, you know, have done. But if something the Lord brings to your mind, just reach out to those people or reach out to those things and repent. This is one of the areas that personally in my life, I want to live above approach. Not only in the area of purity, but in the area of financial purity. Not only not to, you know, give always to God and obey His promptings, but also not to do anything shady or anything illegal or anything against my conscience when it comes to especially selling things, especially trying to cheat my way. Like when I know it's a, it's, it's, it's wrong, it's illegal, it's, it's not right or ripping somebody off financially. I really believe stealing is spilling financial blood. If you steal, you're a financial murderer. You're killing somebody, especially if you're ripping. You know, you say, oh, but it's a company. I don't care. It's a big company. I'm ripping for uh, Hollywood. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. It doesn't make, give you a right to be a heathen, to act like a heathen because you're, you know, downloading, downloading stuff illegally, you know, getting stuff illegally. And, uh, and if you can't afford it, just, just don't get it. But live pure in this area. It's better to have less, but with godliness and purity than to do this shady stuff in our finances. Not only we give bad rap for Jesus' name, but we also can attract a lot of very dangerous demonic parasites in the area of our finances. And, so, and I can speak to you for literally two hours about this topic because it's very dear to my heart and I've had personal experience where the Lord dealt with me um, on things where I was this close to one time sell a car that was bad, you know, and I really wanted to kind of hide the fact that why I'm selling it, you know, because who, who, who will tell you the truth if you're selling a used car and it had a, you know, a used, uh, it had an accident before. And so and the Lord warned me and He says, it's better that you lose $3,000 or $2,000. He said, don't lose your integrity. And He says, trust me, demons will take more down the road. He says, be very, stay away from the sin of stealing the best of your ability. So I just really just wanted to kind of release that because I was as I was praying, um, I felt kind of the Lord putting that into my heart to to mention that. And um, I remember I was speaking to one <laughs> Bible college and one kid actually stole money from his mom. Man, he came to me, he's like, Lord, I hate you. Uh, and so, uh, and I'm like, why? And he's like, man, I have to now call my mom and stuff. So, um, and repent. And so but his mom was very happy. And so, yeah. No, I don't think that downloading college textbooks online uh, for free, um, if they are available for free, especially right now, so much stuff is available for free online. I'm just talking about when you are, um, when it's not available for free and you're, you're mainly dealing mainly right now with you stealing money from people or you taking money from somebody and saying that you didn't take it or you're selling things that you know are broken. Um, but you patched it up just so you can get rid of it and make a buck and you pretty much um, you know give a problem to somebody without letting them know and so and don't do that to other people if you don't want somebody to do that to you so that's just kind of my encouragement for that okay yeah and i know some of you we don't hear these messages on this i barely talk about that but us talking about career promotion blessing i really wanted that door to be closed in our life and the door of stealing and some of you might need to reach out to somebody actually you might need to uh because you maybe ripped somebody off or stole something from somebody and so um and and there are some of you i'm just gonna say like it is i know that the 
uh, YouTube uh, heresy hunters are probably gonna cut this out. So let me just give them a little fresh material. Um, if you're not tithing, according to the Old Testament, you're also stealing. So in the New Testament, we don't see that requirement, um, but I do believe the principle of tithing is that it belongs to God. It seems like God says to bring the tithe. He doesn't say to give the tithe, meaning, you know, you bring something to somebody that it belongs to. So I think that as a Christian, I would be personally um, never try to do that of, oh no, it's, you know, it's not a big deal. I, I treat my tithe very, very sacredly, almost legalistically. People can call me legalist on that. You can call, call me whatever you want. I am not necessarily moved by that. My dad taught me that from the beginning. Um, and I've seen almost every person who doesn't tithe, they can't afford to tithe. And every person who does tithe seem to get God's provision. So, and the Bible does make a reference of curse and devourer. And I do believe that things with curses and demons, they're not just Old Testament stuff. They are kind of like those principles, they apply for Old Testament. So I personally would encourage you to practice the discipline and the ritual of tithing as another way of saying, hey, I want to keep my finances protected and sealed. And so that's again, it's not part of my, my thing and stuff. So, but um, not part of my, my speech today, but that's one of the things that I would highly, highly encourage you to practice. Give to your local church. And um, I believe that, and also don't steal. All right. Well, usually around this time is when we come and we can um, I'm going to mention about giving. I'm not going to mention too much because we already have been talking um, about this. But if the Lord uh, places on your heart today to partner with this ministry, this is how you can do that by going to pastorvlad.org forward slash partner. Um, we are looking for partners. We want to do great things and more things for the Lord through our ministry. And we are able to do um, that. If you don't have a local church, um, I would encourage you to find a local church. If this ministry has been a blessing to you and you don't have a local church, you can um, you can tithe here. But um, I would encourage you to find a local church and tithe in there as well. And so um, you can give through Cash App, Venmo, PayPal. Um, we have other means as well on our website. So you can go there and um, check it out and really appreciate your partners. Your partnership has been crucial in um, releasing Honestly, everything that you see that's being done, guys, it's because of you partners, because of you uh, people who have given. So, mucho gracias. Um, we are supported by partners. And this ministry has a team that is working. You're actually helping them as well, providing for their families who are making content, um, videos, written content, helping with books, translating, the websites, the podcasts, the courses, the blogs, the devotionals, and so much more. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate you doing that. Dominion, thank you for your um, donation. As well as Manuel, thank you for your donation. Amen. I think my phone died. Uh, would you pull the uh, cord here for the, the other one? and uh, appreciate you guys that are giving online and those of you that are giving on the partnership now the partnership will take maybe a minute to set it up so if, so i know some of you may be like oh man i'm just going to give the cash app so i do want to encourage you to become a partner on the website plus you get a chance to kind of connect with our uh, ministry more um, but you can also give just one time also on the website and um, yeah so uh, thank you crystal for becoming a partner today as well as Adefi Zao for becoming a partner. Um, Harmony, thank you for becoming a partner. Ira, uh, thank you for becoming a partner today. Um, amen. Now, some of you are asking again about the, while we're still giving, I'm gonna read a few donations. Um, I'm going to share again about our um, Bible memory group. For those of you that are just tuning in or you logged in a little bit later, we've talked about a Bible memory group. So we, I have started a Bible memory group yesterday. We're going to memorize 100 Bible verses this year. Top 100 
Bible verses this year. So I want you to um, go to this app and then we're going to give you a link or you can go to memory and then you'll be able to open the app. So if you can first get the free app. If you go to Bible, uh, if you go to pastorlad.org forward slash memory, you can get the free app on Android or on the, on the Apple. And then you open the group. I wonder if I can actually, oh wow. So you can actually open it here as well. You can open it on the online. And so, and you can see our messages. So we're kind of, oh wow, a lot of you already uh, messages, uh, messaging here. So you can see our messages. And then, um, so we'll be memorizing uh, uh, two verses a week. I'll be giving you uh, these verses. So right now what we have is we have these two verses. And then these two verses will actually go to your Bible app. They will be in your Bible app right here under my verses. And then when you click under groups, you'll be able to see that group. So um, there's 311 of you already joined in. I am believing that we're going to reach about a thousand people. And my goal is that, you know, we're fasting um, in March again for three days. We're going to be memorizing the Bible. So we're bringing also our life group leaders into this. And so the goal is just for us to get more into God's Word, for us to um, get God's Word inside of us and to learn uh, more of God's Word. So that's pretty much uh, my goal. There is no, I don't get any, I think there's a $10 for the full version of this app. I am not in any way affiliated with this app. I don't know these people who made it, but I do like it. I've been using it for a while and quite a few people in our church have been using it for a while. And so, um, yeah, so th that's just kind of, so if I don't have any, there's no <laughs> hidden agenda that we have uh, for this. Okay. So just uh, check it out. I believe that you will be blessed by it. Uh, Iron Man, thank you for your donation. Gigi uh, or Gigi, thank you for your donation. Tamika, Carlos, um, God bless you for your donation. We appreciate your giving and appreciate um, you doing this. So, so this is the Bible app. You download it here or you click on the link right now below as you're seeing right here, pastorvlad.org forward slash memory and that will give you, that link will take you directly into this. And so you get the free app first and then again, I think the free app will last you, um, the free app will last you with 50 verses. But if you can afford it to get the, the full version of it, 10 bucks, honestly, very good investment, very good investment. Okay. Um, somebody is asking, um, do I have, and then you guys don't forget um, to get the book fast forward, drop the review if you have not. So let's break 400 reviews by the end of this fast. So we have about 50 more to go. Um, so go ahead and just, you know, drop the review. This would mean a lot. And um, for us, we don't have a um, small group online. So I see some of you asking if I have a small group online. So uh, for right now, we don't have a small group online. Um, and we do have a Telegram chat chat that we use. And now we have a Bible app, a Bible memorization app that we're going to use. And then we do have a Facebook group that we use. So when you sign up for the challenge, you get the Facebook group uh, acceptance where people share different things. And so um, uh, somebody on TikTok is saying, what is the app name? So Grayson's going to drop the link right now on TikTok as well. Um, it's called Bible Memory. But if you go to my YouTube right now, so for those of you on TikTok and on Instagram, if you're not seeing the links, just go over to my YouTube right now. We're dropping the links in the chat and then they are also in the description. Where in San Antonio are you coming? Where can I see the info? So the info for San Antonio event is on uh, my website, pastorvlad.org uh, forward slash events. So if you go to my website, if you go to my website and you go to the events on my website, you'll be able to see where, so like 21 day fast, uh, preaching, where I'm preaching, when I'm preaching at Hungry Gen. Then you can see the conference. You can see a radically uncensored uh, conference there as well. And then that's the conference I'm going to be at, radically uncensored in San Antonio, Texas. Some pastors preach to give to the poor. I've tied 
I've tithing. What's your stance on that? Uh, some pastors preach to give to the poor. Um, so my personal position is that tithing belongs to the house of God. The Bible says in Malachi to bring the tithe to um, to the house of God so that there will be bread and I believe it helps to maintain a lot of the things that are happening in the house of God and so um, I give my tithe to my local church and then of course above the tithe you know currently I am supporting the building fund um, uh, but and also try to support few other ministers and few other projects and then we, we try to with my wife support um, the needs of people that God puts on our in our path and in our way and so I do believe that the local church has the responsibility to help the poor as well but the, my position is that the tithe goes to the local church now some people don't have a local church I know and um, so I see some people even give to our ministry some people give their tithe to where they're being spiritually fed um, there's really no concrete specific instruction in the scripture except the Malachi scripture that deals with tithing goes to the storehouse of God and so um, so it is your decision but we do encourage you to give it to the local church how do i refute a fellow christian's belief that people can't come people can come to god in other ways except jesus not believing jesus is the only way and the bible is the ultimate authority uh, well if they are believers christian believers and they believe that you can come to god not through um jesus they're not christian um they're not christian so it's it's the uh, lib it's it's the liberal kind of a view where the bible is one of the books and jesus is one of the ways and so um a christian orthodox view um and it's not only view is what jesus claimed that he is the way to the father and that nobody comes to the father except him so if people don't want to recognize the Bible as the Word of God, then um, you, you, you can't necessarily debate them into it. Plus a lot of people, it's not that they don't believe, they don't want to believe. I don't have a small group, somebody's asking. What is the name of the Bible you mentioned Sunday? Okay, so the name of the Bible that I mentioned Sunday is is the Jack Hayford um, study Bible. So actually, if you go to one of my one of my videos, um, any of my uh, videos like this one right now, and we should have it below the description. So um, if you click on Bible study tools, I have links in my in my thing. So I have uh, few Bible studies so the one that I would recommend is this one is the spirit filled spirit new spirit filled Bible kingdom equipping through power of the word and so it's Jack, by Jack Hayford Jack Hayford already passed away actually last week and so um or this one so it, it, they're, they're kind of the same I think the yeah this one probably because this one has more reviews so I would just uh buy this one I have it I think it, I have few of them physical copies and I have them also bought on all of my Bible apps um, so I'm one of those weirdos you know I, I don't spend money on, on stuff but books and Bibles are the things that I feel like I overspend I can't tell you how many how much money I spent on commentaries and books and I just can't tell you because some of you would judge me and uh, yeah but it's it's one of my weaknesses which is as a pastor I think it's a good weakness to have and and sometimes if God blesses me I just you know go buy it like you know 27 volume commentary for like a thousand bucks and so um, so yeah so that that's my my thing but a spirit-filled Bible is what I would encourage Aaron thank you so much for your donation on the cash app God bless you um, so Telly uh, is asking again, what is the name of the group? So Telly, uh, all you got to do is go, um, we, we're going to have it in the link below, but go to this link. Uh, you see right here, pastoflad.org forward slash memory. So it will take you to this, this thing, and then you'll open the group in the, after you download the Bible app, first download the Bible app, then you'll open the group and it should take you directly to your phone's app. And this is the, the group 
memorizing top 100 verses of the Bible. So this this is that group. Yeah. And guys, uh, feel free to put a photo. You know, I put a photo, mine photo. So you can feel free to put a photo of yourself, especially, you know, you're fasting. So photos usually look good during fasting. And then um, you can, you know, put stuff in the wall over here and just kind of let people know. I don't know what this announcement's for. I haven't seen it. And then the first two verses we're memorizing right now are Genesis 1.1 and Joshua 1.8. And so um, you can actually probably choose your own translation. That's right. You can choose your own translation. So I keep the New King James, um, but you can choose your own translation. And so, and then we're going to get, oh, wow. It actually tells me how many successful attempts people had. Charisma, charisma. You're like in everything. On every chat that I see you and um, and in every single group that I see you, you're there. So, yeah. Um, which Bible version do you prefer? Um, if you know me, you know that I prefer um, this Bible version. So, I prefer um, New King James. New King James um, translation is my... But I also have other, many, many other translations that I would read through and um and yeah new king james is the one that i do that uh love hollis thank you for your contribution through paypal is the 12 p.m service just deliverance or service plus deliverance so 12 p.m service is a service and then we have deliverance so you can come to any of our um 12 services let's get 12 services you can come to any of our three services this weekend and so um I'm gonna open the Hungry Gen, um, Hungry Gen Church right now. If you're coming to Hungry Gen this weekend, a um, few things that we want to give you a reminder, and that is our services are at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 12 p.m. 12 p.m. is our deliverance service. Um, our 8 a.m. service is less busy, so I would encourage you to come to 8 a.m. to 8 a.m. if you can. I would also remind you that if you're staying for one service, the rest of the two services, you will need to be in the overflow unless you're being going through deliverance at 12 p.m. And so that we can make room for people, new people that are coming. So if you are able to come to the 8 a.m. service, they're all identical. So I'm going to be preaching. And I'm going to be preaching all the same uh, message on all three services. So nothing is really uh, new on that. Digital deliverance is happening this uh, Saturday for people who went through the deliverance course and then they get the link. And then this Sunday night is our deliverance service. And then our race to deliver conference is on November 3 uh, through 5th. Are you prophesying for 12 uh, services? <laughs> no, I'm not prophesying. I can't do 12 services in one Sunday. Have you ever done Bible in a year? Yes. I actually many, many years in a row, um, maybe decade or something or more. I uh, Part of my uh, daily or yearly thing was to read the Bible through the year. So I would say it's very, very important to read the Bible through the year. Uh, currently, I am not reading the Bible through the year. I am reading the Bible um, as kind of, I'm actually right now in the Gospels. For the last three months or two months, I've been rereading the Gospels and Book of Acts. As in the summer, I was really in the Epistles of Paul. Pretty much I've read Epistles of Paul many times, Romans especially. So I am in just personally in a different season, I'm reading daily. Uh, but it's a slightly different approach. But I would encourage you, if you've never read the Bible from the beginning to end, to do read the Bible from the beginning to end in a year. But don't, it's not a rule, it's just a recommendation. Are you having sea salt with your water? I was thinking to add uh, Himalayan pink salt. Would you recommend it or is it better without it? Um, my wife, uh, babe, could you answer that question? Uh, from my understanding is the fasting salt and that um, Himalayan pink salt is good to add to the water. Uh, yes, but I'm not adding. No, I haven't been adding any salt at all. And actually, I think in like four or five days or no minerals at all and stuff. So I have been uh, not necessarily doing that. Maybe I should. But honestly, like my knee pain during the night stopped completely. I haven't been having knee pain at all for the last two days. And, um, and yeah, so 
uh, that's been really amazing i'm not sure that's because of that um, but i think it's just those there are those seasons in fasting where for me it's the second week like four or five days my sleep is crazy my uh my knees are hurting and it's just not not fun and so but then it just leaves and so so i kind of already have done enough to know that this is not gonna last and i just persevere are you having a sea salt with your water would you recommend a seven day fast a seven day water fast yeah you can add a fasting salt with your water during your seven day water fast i think it'd be beneficial uh, dr berg uh, and a few others are recommending that to to fast with um that and to fast with a um a particular supplement which we just dropped in the chat you can check it out is there a program you would recommend to read a bible in a year um so th there's few uh, i know that um the guys who have the bible project have their own i would encourage probably to do the bible project app not or bible project reading plan a full year bible project has also these videos that they release for each book that gives you like a overview um so that's what i would recommend i want to give away bibles where can i find a good buy to buy a bulk of bibles purchase i i'm not the person to ask i don't know so someone can believe in jesus themselves but not be truly saved if they disagree with the scripture um well <laughs> How can you believe in Jesus if you don't agree with the scripture? Like, which Jesus are we talking about? Jesus from Mexico or we're talking about like Jesus of Nazareth um, and stuff. So th there's many Jesuses. Um, so there's Jesus, a figment of our imagination, somebody that visits you during the night and, and you start developing your own theories. There's a Jesus we make in our own image and likeness, the one that we like. Um, and then there's Jesus that the scripture reveals us. Jesus said clearly, he says, search the scriptures for they testify of me. So scriptures testify of Jesus. The Old Testament is Christ concealed. The New Testament is Christ revealed. And so if you have a view of Jesus that's not in line with the scripture, you have a different Jesus. And so, and that different Jesus is the one that you made or the culture made. And that Jesus is not going to save you. Why? Because he didn't die for you. That Jesus is not real. Are you in the Washington state? Yes, I am in the Washington state, Tri-Cities, Washington. Uh, our church is located in Pasco, Washington. Any advice for the ones that are, have school and are trying to do a water fast? Um, drink water. Drink water. Um, stay hydrated. Brush your teeth a few times a day. And don't make a big deal about your fasting. First few days might be hard. After that, fourth day, fifth day, it gets easier. How do we sign up for a Facebook event for the marriage conference um, in New York? So you just go to uh, the event page on my website. And um, when you go to this event page right here, Uh, and you click reserve a spot right here so so uh, below you, you don't see it on the screen right now right here because the, the screen is smaller but you can click um, let me see if I can just shrink the screen yeah right here click reserve the spot that's that's how you sign up Do you have a release date for fast forward Russian version on the Amazon needed for a gift? Honestly, um, the guy that's been doing my formatting, whenever he gets done to, with it, that's where we're going to release it. We right now are looking for another formatter as well because I want to, we have a lot of books that we need to just kind of release, but the bottleneck right now is the formatting. So we are looking to actually bring another person on board that the next books will have a lot more speedy because, you know, we have russian for a pdf download but to release it we have to have that person and so um so the moment we'll have it done I'll, I'll mention it to you guys but it should be soon and i apologize for the wait is it normal to feel extreme fatigue toward the end of the fast i am on day 17th um yes sometimes it comes in waves 
where you can feel you know extreme fatigue like for me uh one one of the first times that i did a 21 day fast 17 uh 13 years ago then that's when i like 17 day was like unbearable and you know and, and i you know took extra long showers and stuff so and that wasn't good so yeah it's it's possible i would just encourage to i mean if you if you really really just can't move and you have to go to a job then maybe you know um, get a little bit of chicken broth or, or bone broth and so to kind of strengthen yourself um, or maybe diluted tomato juice just a just a little bit um, uh, not the v8 one but like organic uh, but diluted and stuff so you can just kind of it could give a little bit more of um, that strength um, in your body to kind of persevere uh, but yeah it, it's it, it's normal actually to experience that it, it comes in waves like that's one thing I when I did the 40 day fast you know there was these like four days hallelujah I can go forever and then there were like days were like oh, tired and weary and just like fatigued yeah and it, it helps when you're able to not work in a very like focused job or if your boss is like more lenient with you to be able to kind of be a little bit slower and they're aware of what you're doing or if you're working from home it just makes it so much easier Okie dokie. Thank you guys so much for sticking out, staying with me uh, all this two hours. Wow, today was two hours. So tomorrow, guys, tomorrow I am going to be live streaming at 8.30. 8.30. John Adams, can we use honey? Yeah, you can add, but just very little uh, to, you know, hot water. I would be careful to putting too much honey um, into your, like, uh, some people drink tea, um, you know, like uh, caffeine-free tea, and just to kind of for the flavor of water. And so you can add a little bit, you know, half of a teaspoon, so to kind of uh, for the taste and stuff. I don't see that it's, it's a problem. Um, can somebody tithe on behalf of somebody else? Manage their tithing like Job did for their children? No, I don't know. That's how that worked. I don't think that Joe was tithing on behalf of his children. I think he was offering sacrifice, uh, covering his children's you know mishaps or anything maybe that they have done. I don't think that that was necessarily tithing on their behalf. So I would just encourage you to to tithe and encourage them to tithe. So tomorrow, 8:30. Come on, somebody, drop that in the chat. 8:30. I'm teaching our uh, interns tomorrow at 10 o'clock. So I'm gonna stream a little bit earlier. We have a prayer early in the morning. And then we are um, gonna live stream at 8:30. Somebody dropped it in the chat. 8:30 um, tomorrow morning. And then, um, yeah. A link for the group, please, for the Bible Memory app. We will add that in the description right now. How long should a fast be for the beginners? Honestly, I think beginners could start with one day, three days. So, yeah. Okay, I just got a message. Uh, also, Amazon Spanish ready to upload just paperback. Uh, okay, so Spanish and Russian should be uploaded very soon. Uh, so, I'm pretty excited for that. God bless you guys. See you again very soon in less than 24 hours.